We are weighing in today, my first week shaky legs back from our five week vacation. So did I gain, did I lose, did I maintain? Stay tuned. I came off of a five week vacation, road tripping it with my family, had all the challenges along the way about what to eat and how to keep it keto, and I developed a very real addiction to bang drinks. And this week, starting off, I wanted to conquer some of those bad habits. I wanted to cut out the bang. I wanted to incorporate the intermittent fasting. I wanted to start having a meal plan and preparing my foods and trying to keep it as basic and simple and clean as possible. So I started off the week, last week, at 196.8. And today I weigh in at 193.8. So that is a loss of three pounds. Three pounds in one week. So I haven't had a really good week like that since I did the first week of clean keto where I measured and weighed and tracked every little morsel that I put in my mouth. So this week I was on shaky ground. I was trying to find my groove. I was trying to get into the swing of things again. And I was finding it a little bit hard to do everything that I did that first week. So I took baby steps. I still kept it keto and I still managed to lose three pounds. So that is a success in my book. I'm getting three pounds closer to my goal. When I hit 190, I'll obviously be at 75 pounds lost. When I get down to 165, it'll be 100 pounds lost. When I get down to 150, um, that is going to be my initial goal. I had given myself 150. As you start getting closer to your goal, your goal starts to move further away. <laughs> I don't know why that happens, but originally my first main goal was to be 165. And then as I got closer to 165, I was like, well, maybe it should be more like 150. And as I'm still, you know, going down this journey, I'm like, well, should it be really more like 140, 150? And this is the exact same situation that happened when I lost 100 pounds in my 20s. I remember saying I wanted to be 150. And when I got to 150, I was like, eh, 140. And I got to 140, eh, now I think I still need to keep losing. And I kept going going until I was 128 and a size four. And my size fours were falling off of me and I was still going, ooh, but maybe I can be a two or a zero. And that kind of thing is what concerns me because I don't wanna have an unhealthy view of my body and of diet and of weight loss. So I wanna be at a healthy weight for me. I'm five foot two and a half. I kind of round up to five foot three, but let's be honest, as I'm getting older, it's probably, probably more closer to five foot two. So for my height, for my age I'm a mid 40s and for my shape I'm very top heavy I've always had my top heavier than my bottom so I was just thinking maybe 140 would be good we'll see how it goes I think I want to start just kind of reassessing how I feel at every point so once I hit 160 150 140 and kind of just check in with myself and go, does this feel good? Does it feel healthy? Does it feel like I'm at my best? So that's the plan. I'm very proud of myself. I did meal plan loosely for the week. I kind of had an idea of what I wanted to make for dinners. So that was a plus. I did have alcohol this week. I had alcohol, gosh, I think twice this week, maybe once last weekend randomly and I don't think much I can't remember a week seems like so far away or maybe that's how much I drank I'm not sure but um this week I had I think two whiskey drinks on a random Tuesday it's not ideal I'd like to keep it without alcohol but the reality is especially like this has got to be sustainable for our lives and I can't imagine you know saying I'm never gonna have a cocktail ever again, just like I'm gonna say I'm never going to, you know, not track or track or, you know, like you can't make those kind of statements. So I'm gonna do the best that I can. I like to see that I still lost three pounds even though I had a couple of cocktails this week. It makes me wonder 
Maybe I would have lost five pounds if I didn't, or maybe it wouldn't have made a difference. I'm not sure. Maybe that can be a challenge I do one week as well. What would happen if I drank, you know, throughout this week versus no drinking at all? I'm not sure. But on today's menu, today we are going to make Keto Connects Butter Chicken for the first time. We are... I, I've had Indian food before and my husband has had Indian food before. I don't think the kids are going to be on board so I'm kind of already planning something else for them. But what I did do today is I took my phone out. This is the step that I had been skipping because I was being too lazy to input everything. But I went into Carb Manager, I created a recipe and I inputted all of the ingredients and measurements for the butter chicken. It only makes four Four servings I think it's only a pound of chicken and I only allowed myself one serving out of that so Caesar's either gonna eat the entire three or he's gonna have one or and we'll put the rest away I'm not sure we're gonna have to see how much comes out of it but I went ahead and created the recipe and then I inputted it into my macros for the day before I had anything. So I haven't even had my coffee yet. It is 10.30 in the morning. I haven't had my coffee, I haven't had breakfast, I haven't had anything except for water and my medications. And so I put in the butter chicken, I put two cups of the cauliflower rice. So then I checked to see how much I had based on that and then I was like, I still have room to have another meal. So I already inputted into my carb manager that I'm going to have breakfast, bacon, eggs, avocado, all that stuff. So with everything inputted, my collagen coffee, I decided to add some MCT oil in there today. I haven't had it yet, but I'm going to. And with all of this that I have inputted, I have almost a perfect day of macros. Now, my challenge is if it comes to the point where it's, time to make breakfast and I'm not hungry. I don't want to feel like I have to eat because I inputted it. And on the contrary, when it comes to dinner time and I serve myself and I'm still hungry afterwards, I don't want to feel like that's all I can have. I'm not allowed to have any more. But I'm thinking since I'm getting used to eating smaller meals and less times throughout the day thanks to intermittent fasting, that um, even if I have a breakfast, if I'm hungry this morning, uh, I'm going to rearrange some things today, but I was thinking if I had some breakfast this morning, I may not be so ravenous and hungry by dinner where it feels like I need to have double servings. So what I think I'm going to do today is I'm going to save my collagen coffee for like an afternoon snack. Since it's 1030, I'm going to break my fast with the breakfast and just coffee with a little bit of heavy cream. I gotta input that in there. And then save my collagen coffee for the afternoon and then dinner. I think that's going to sustain me throughout the day. So three pounds lost today. I'm super excited. We'll see what next week holds for me. I'm gonna try and be very good about tracking everything this coming week and then I want to see what difference that makes on the scale and then probably the following week I won't track just to kind of get into my groove of it. Oh my gosh I walk in and my husband made himself breakfast. What is this? It's a ham, cheese, bacon, and tomato omelet. Wow that looks fantastic. How many eggs is this? Three. Nice. Delish. All right, it's been about 17 hours that I've been fasting. It is about 11.15. I went ahead and made my coffee. I put some cinnamon on top of my homemade whipped cream coffee with uh, just a squirt of the chocolate stevia, and I'm gonna make some breakfast. All right, so I had two eggs, two slices of bacon, a half an avocado, and an ounce of Colby cheese. I had the ounce because that's what I had put in my car manager app, but I had never, ever waited out before. So I waited out, and I realized I probably could have gotten away with only half an ounce of cheese, or probably no cheese since I have the avocado. So, oh well, that was breakfast, lunch. It's 11.45. All right, it is 3.35. I went ahead and made my coffee. I have a second cup of coffee today with collagen and MCT oil. I probably would have had it earlier, maybe around 2.33 o'clock if we weren't running around running errands today. But this is it for now. And I'm going to show you what we got at Sam's Club. 
All right, we have a really quick haul from Sam's Club, really mini haul that we got. So we got these pecan halves, Caesar really likes them. And I actually wanna do like a roasted pecans with some swerve and cinnamon, like candied pecans, but keto friendly. So I wanna try that. So we got this big two pound bag. We cannot go to Sam's Club and not get the chef chamois. So I ordered the um, French onion butter, which has the Asiago cheese, and then the garlic butter with Parmesan. I ordered two of these because Nick likes garlic butter on his toast. We like sauteing veggies in it, cooking steaks and meats in it. It's an amazing product, so we love that. Then we got some holy guacamole, these little guacamole cups. These are really good um, to keep in your freezer, but I also like pull out a few at a time and put them in the fridge and use them on scrambled eggs or a steak or a burger or something. And it's really good uh, macros. There's four net carbs, or actually four carbs, but three of them are dietary fiber. So it's only one net carb per mini cup. So those are really great. These bacon bits, I got them mainly for Ivy because she loves e eating bacon and eggs scrambled. And so it's really easy to just throw this in, but it's real bacon bits, zero carbs, no sugar. It's a really good find to have. I wanted to try this white queso dip. I saw it somewhere and I was like, next time I'm at Sam's, I have to grab some. It's got one carb per two tablespoons. And I figured maybe this weekend, if we grill some fajitas, we can have some pork rinds. I like getting this big jar of pork rinds um, at Sam's and either do some of this queso dip or I also saw this chicken dip, this buffalo chicken dip. It looks like you would have to heat it up, I would assume, right? You don't want to eat this hot, I mean cold. But um, the macros are really good too. A, a two tablespoons is two carbs. Um, so I'm excited to try this. I'll be eating these things like this and this, maybe, mainly on like the weekends when I'm kind of allowing myself a little bit of leeway. Not crazy leeway, but just, you know, some treats here and there. Caesar loves Havarti and Gouda, so when I found these, I had to grab a bag because he loves these little snack cheeses. Um, 80 calories, 70 calories, zero carbs. Um, and then I got these huge bags of rice cauliflower. I already have rice cauliflower from when I went to the grocery store, but these are the really big ones. They're four steamable bags. So I have, uh, I have them in my deep freezer in case we're ready to use them. And all right, y'all. I mean, I couldn't pass this up. It was 24 16 ounce cans, a variety pack of flavors. It's got sour heads, blue rasp, purple haze, and cherry limeade. I like all of those flavors, and this whole 24 pack was probably, I wanna say 30 something dollars, but when you consider they're two bucks a piece at Walmart, this would have been almost $50 just to buy a case like this. So the fact that I found it for 30 something was a win. I don't plan on drinking them every day, but like I said, if maybe on the weekends I allow myself a bang, or something, um, it wouldn't be the end of the world, right? You gotta live a little. You can't be so strict on yourself that you don't enjoy life. And if bangs make me happy, and I want to take you know, the risk of slowing my weight loss down in case it does that, it may not, but if I wanna have a bang on the weekend, that should be okay. Live your best life, right? That's what everyone loves to say. Live your best life, and you don't want this to be hard. You want it to be easy. You want it to be enjoyable. So that was like my little mini haul at Sam's Club. All right, this is the finished product in the bowl. It looks delicious. Well, what's the verdict? This is butter chicken. It's an Indian dish. What do you think? I think it's good. The tastes are familiar. Uh, interesting, tastes interesting. Do you like it? I do like it. I don't dislike it. It's interesting. Would I like you the... eat it again? Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Would you want it every week? No. 
No, okay. I would not. All right. But I like it. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all of the support, all of the comments, all of the tips that you guys are giving me. Make sure to leave me a comment. Let me know where you are on your journey. And by the way, have you made the butter chicken before? How did it come out for you? Did you like it? Did your family like it? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you haven't subscribed already, make sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you find out when all the new videos are coming out. I'm Lydia. You're watching Ketosis Focus, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.